Hello and welcome to another video tutorial about the SAP Cloud Application Studio. In this lesson we will look on the interface after the first start and we will do the first step inside Studio. What you see here is the default layout of the Cloud Application Studio. If you see something different or if you have messed up the UI, for example you have closed all these windows, you don't know how to get them or how to arrange them there is the possibility to reset all this using tools import export settings here you can choose reset all settings next you don't need to save your settings you just want to reset them and finish and once this is completed click on close and the screen layout gets reverted to the default now let's look at the different screen areas we have on the very left side there is the toolbox and this is totally of no use. You can close this and now we are left with the important ones. My solutions is the list of solutions that have already been developed in a tenant. If you're connecting the first time this list is most likely empty. Each of the solutions here can be imagined as an independent add-on. They cannot depend on each other. So if you have a development, it is most likely that you have only one solution in a customer system where all the developments are done. When I open the solution, we can see certain entities and a new window. I think the window at the bottom is pretty self-explaining. It's the error list that uh, shows up all the syntax warnings and errors that are done in, uh, in a certain code. On the right side, this is the Solution Explorer. And the Solution Explorer contains all the entities within one solution. And I now hijacked one of the solutions of my colleague and we can see he has created account extension, he has extended a screen, this uh, XUI component refers to a screen extension, and yeah, so in, in the middle now, this is the code window where all the magic happens. So there are basically two types of source code relevant uh, objects in here. Let's create another one how you code and how you do this later on uh, will be another video. So I'm going forward a little bit faster here. So you have BO and XBO files and inside those files the language is called BODL and if you have script files which are coded events on business objects these are so-called uh, Absol advanced business scripting language and these are the entities you need to code everything else is configuration is code lists maintenance and so on what options you have to add here you can find that in this add new item button you can click here and you will be presented with one of the most important screens in the Cloud Application Studio because this one contains all the entities that the uh, Cloud Application Studio supports. And if you click on them you will get a little explanation on the right side. And these are also good keywords to search for in the PDI documentation. What else do we have? We have a menu. The file is pretty much useless. You don't need to do the hair anything. The same applies to edit. Interesting is view. In view you can um, enable the view panes we have already here now. There's one more. 
the repository explorer which is a very important one it takes a bit to load but here you have a list of all the objects that can be accessed within the SAP system and you have documentation for example the business partner and if you scroll down at most of the objects you also have sample code how to use these objects in uh, scripts so like this You also can see which data types we support, what are the properties of the data types, enhancements, options, interfaces and so on. So this is really a very, very helpful tool in order to explore the system and to find out how to um, work with, with the SAP system you're connected to. The next one, dump analysis. Uh, this actually shows you runtime errors that can happen uh, for example when you access objects that are not instantiated uh, etc this this will come up here uh, these are most likely if you have a uh, if you have an error popping up on the UI in the front end and you don't have an error here you will most likely find one here Then we have the implementation manager. The implementation manager is used to trigger the deployment process. So we have here the option to download and assemble a solution. We have the option to upload solution, activate, import solution templates and so on. There is also a log where we can see what happened to the solution in the past or what is currently happening to it. We have a tenant status and see if the solution is also active in other tenants on the same system for the same customer, maybe in different versions. Uh, so this actually all around this is uh, about transporting the solution from one tenant to another, activating it, creating patches and so on. Unfortunately, very important is the session administrator. You can also reach it using the little man, the ant antenna man, <laughs> I, I don't know what that symbol is. And here you can see who is currently locking objects. So PDI supports a locking mechanism. That means now you can see here the check mark in front of the event after modify. This means this object is currently checked out by me and if anyone else tries to access it he will be blocked until I checked it in. Now it's free for anyone else to um, check it out and to work on it. Sometimes is this a uh, situation that there has to be urgent changes to be done and the guy currently Locking the event, uh, yeah, locking the event is on vacation or something like this, and then the session administration is your friend. Here you can uh, select a user and just kill his locks and continue development. But you have to be aware that it's possible to generate situations where you are able to uh, overwrite code that is already written or to, um, yeah have have the possibility of code getting lost. What else do we have? There are actually a few options that are inherited from uh, Visual Studio which is the basis for the Cloud Application Studio uh, which are not used. So this is the error list we saw that on the bottom uh, same the output find results is say self explanatory and the property window which is this one here um, here you can see who has created a certain object when it got created 
So this, this information changes when I uh, change the focus on another entity. And you can also see if the runtime objects are uh, up to date. So for he here, for example, we can see this one is not yet generated. However, this one is generated, but out of date. And this one is active. Okay. Debug actually is pretty important. I will explain this in another video. You can debug those uh, scripts within the Cloud Application Studio. Same for tools. I've never used it. There is nothing really important in here uh, besides the import export settings and the options. Options are very helpful in order to access uh, the connectivity and to set up the connectivity and uh, you can also go to the text editor for example and enable line numbers for business object extensions, business objects, business logic. Administration is very important. Here are some functions from the implementation manager, session administration and so on. You can open the UI designer directly here without an, an actual screen. You can uh, call the browser with the right URL. Um, admin mode, I will come to this in another video. Access rights also. And you can directly access options and settings which jumps directly to the uh, SAP general section. And last but not least, window, which has the default set you usually want to expect and help, which is, uh, yeah, we already looked at this in, in the last video about how to get help in the Cloud Application Studio. So this is pretty much the interface of the Cloud Application Studio. I hope you find this video helpful. Thank you and see you next time. Bye bye.